Well, good evening, and I hope you're having a wonderful night. This is our third edition of Scott Tube. Tonight's topic is combining like terms. We have some major vocabulary to talk about. I would sing it, but I don't want to risk the chance that I get sued for mental anguish. If you think I'm kidding, you should hear me sing. It's a variable. This one we've had before, so you should know it. I'll give you a second to write it down. Boop. Do you have it? All right, from night one notes, we said a variable is a symbol used to represent a number. Now, does your definition have to match mine exactly? The answer is no, but it has to be mathematically accurate. And of course, if you match what I say, pretty good chance you're going to be right on. The next definition that we have to look at is terms. You guys are probably all too young for the show Home Improvement, but I am totally feeling like the neighbor who is always behind the fence. So here's what a term is. A term is a number, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more va variables. Write that one down. A term is a number, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more variables. We will see these. These are the things being added or subtracted when we're talking about terms. X. X is a term. It's a variable. Or you might have a term that's negative 7. Okay, that is also a term. It's a number. Or I could have things like 3x squared y. That's the product of a number and some variables. Or negative a, b to the third, c, d. Again, just the product of a number and one or more variables. These things are all terms. The third definition tonight is constant. If we think about what the word constant means, constant means something that doesn't change. In math, if it doesn't change, that means it doesn't have a variable. So a constant is a term that has no variable. A term that has no variable. So if we look at our examples over here, you can pick out the one thing that doesn't have a variable. The thing with no variable is negative 7. Negative 7 is our constant. It doesn't have a variable. Our next vocabulary term is coefficient. Coefficient is the number in front of a variable. The number in front of a variable is a coefficient. Whenever we have a variable, we would be looking for the number in front of it. Okay? So if I look at my first example up here, x, what is the number in front of it? It's not written, but the coefficient in front of the x is 1. Okay? In this example over here, 3x squared y, the coefficient, 3. In the example down here at the bottom, the coefficient is negative 1. Okay? The one down here does not have a coefficient because it doesn't have a variable. Our final vocabulary term is like terms. To be like terms, you must have exactly the same variable part. This means that x goes with x, y goes with y, x squared goes with x squared, a squared b can only go with a squared b. So whatever the variable part is, it has to be exactly the same. When I think about like terms, I think about m and m's. We got a lot of m's going on, but to be like terms, they would have to be the same kind of m and m's. Only go with plain m and m's, peanut m and m's only go with peanut m and m's, almond m and m's only go with almond m and m's. Now, are they all m's? Yeah. In the same way, when I put like terms together, x can only go with x, x squared only goes with x squared, x to the third only goes with x to the third. They're all x's, but they have to be exactly the same variable part to be considered a like term. All right, we're going to take a look at example C together. The rest of them I'll leave for you to do. I don't want to get too redundant. So if I'm looking at example C, I need to be able to pick out the terms, the constants, the coefficients, and what are like terms. So we'll run through example C together. What I like to do is I like to put the terms in boxes. So if I was doing this, I would put a box around everything till I got to an add or a subtract. And then I would continue on past the 7, past the 3x, past the 8x squared, finally around the 4. The things in the boxes, those are my terms. So if I look at my terms and I want to jot those down, my terms would be 5x squared, negative 7, 
3x, we don't need to put the plus because we know it's positive. 8x squared and 4. Those are my terms. The next thing I'm looking for are my constant terms. Okay, if I'm looking for my constants, remember a constant is a term that has no variable. So in this case, I can find two things that don't have any variables. They're negative 7 and 4. Next, we will want to locate the coefficients. Notice on your notes it says to write the term and then circle the coefficient. So I have 5x squared. In that case, the number in front of the variable is 5. My next one with the variable is 3x. The coefficient on that is 3. And my last one with the variable is 8x squared. The coefficient on that is 8. Lastly, we will look for the like terms. Remember to be like terms, we have to have exactly the same variable part. So in this case, I'm looking, looking, looking. I have an x squared and an x squared. I can put 5x squared and 8x squared together because they have exactly the same variable part. I can't put them with the x because the x is not exactly the same. The other set of like terms I have is that I can put a constant with another constant. So negative 7 and 4 would also be like terms. Okay? Please use what we've done here to help you fill in the rest of the boxes. All right, for our last section, we need to look at combining like terms. So for our first blank here, we need to put that only like terms can be combined. And by combined, we mean either we're going to be adding or subtracting different terms. Second one, the way that we combine like terms is by adding their coefficients. Okay, by adding their coefficients, adding the number in front of them. When I think about adding and subtracting like terms, here's something that helps me remember whether or not I should mess with the exponent. Let's say you were holding two x's, two adorable, cute little x's. Aren't they cute? Right? Super, super cute. And I added, I gave you three more x's. Here they are. Okay? There's all your x's. Well, what do you have? You have 5x. Did these magically change into x squareds? No, because we're adding or subtracting, which means you either have more or less of something. We're not changing what they are. Okay, so when I look at those, I'm, I, I don't mess with the exponents. Okay, so when I look at these examples on E, I'm looking for what can I put together? Well, it's got to have exactly the same variable part. So if I look at this right here, I see a 2m. I can put that together with the 9m. Okay, when I do that, 2m plus 9m would be 11m. Okay, I don't have anything to put with the negative 3m squared, so I just leave it. Okay, if I look at the negative 6, are there any other just numbers I can put that with? Yeah, I can put negative 6 with negative 4. That would be negative 10. And then finally, I have the little n down there. Well, I don't have anything to put with the n, so I just write minus n. Now, okay, all variable parts are different. I've combined the like terms. Let's try the same thing here on i. If I look through here, I see y to the third and y to the third. I can put 11y to the third with minus 4y to the third. That gives me 7y to the third. I can also put negative y with positive 2y. Remember, this is negative 1 plus 2, which would be positive 1. So you can either put the 1 there, or you don't have to. The answer to that one would be 7y to the third plus y. Okay, please complete all of the other examples on the guided notes before you get back to class tomorrow. Okay, if you have any questions, make sure you come see me. I'm more than willing to help you. Stop in before school, stop in after school, shoot me an email. Okay, I would love to help you. Hope you're having a good night.